Hello everybody and welcome to Blue Marble Science. Mr. Thrive and Survive has a problem with astronomy. He's got a problem, all right. He's totally clueless. Rich, uh, Mr. Thrive and Survive, is one of those globe deniers that really wants to believe his own nonsense, but no matter how hard he tries, geometry and common sense always seem to win. Now, warning, again, there's an extreme risk of facial injury and monitor damage. So push that monitor back out of the way. Put on the oven mitts. Hey, Gladys, are you ready? <coughs> Let's light this dumpster fire and have some fun. Well, good day, everyone, or good night, depending on where you are. Rich, Mr. Thrive and Survive, and this is sort of an intro video uh, before the evidence is actually shown in full. There is, uh, well, I've been looking at this since May of 2015, looking at evidence for the shape of the earth and also things in the universe, do they make sense based on the NASA model they gave us. Now, Mike Ball should be credited for this idea, which is brilliant. So for over four years, I've been looking at this, and this is one of the most brilliant ideas I've heard of that cannot be debunked, as you're going to see, which absolutely blows away NASA's model. Well, you get the idea. Uh, Rich doesn't think much of NASA. And, of course, we have known the distance to the sun since so Huygens in 1659, I think. But, well, whatever. It's his story. We'll let him tell it. Okay, guys, uh, this is Sun and Moon Angles Part 2 on Mike Ball's channel. Uh, there will be a link to that, and I'll try to put a card in as, as well. Hopefully, I'll remember that. And uh, we're going to watch 11 minutes and 35 seconds of this. This is extremely important. I can't emphasize enough, guys, how strong this evidence is. Why is it so strong? Because mathematically we can prove it and observationally we can prove it. In fact, we've already observationally proven it, and you're going to see that also. Uh, before we even get started, let's go over what the um, contention is on the part of Rich. He's going to try to say that an observer on the Earth could not possibly see the full moon rising as the sun is setting. Um, and he's going to use some very flawed graphics to try to demonstrate that. So before we go any further, this is the reason why Flat Earth has such an issue with trying to understand things. They don't understand scale. What you're seeing on the screen right now is an AutoCAD drawing of the solar system, or at least our part of it, drawn to scale. Way over here on the left-hand side of the drawing, that yellow uh, little dot is the sun. All the way over here on the right-hand side, that little red circle is actually the entire uh, orbit of the moon. There we go. And let's see if we can see here a little better. Here, the little blue dot in the center is the Earth, and the little white dot out here, drawn to scale, is the moon. So let's let these guys continue for a minute, and then we'll show you why they're wrong. Picture this red line as the top-down view of a plane that dissects the Earth and the Sun. In the heliocentric model, the Moon passes this plane twice per orbit. When it passes the plane on the Sun side, it is a new Moon. And when the Moon is perfectly dissected by the plane, it is peak new Moon, the moment when Sun, Earth, and Moon are perfectly aligned on that plane. When it passes the plane opposite of the Sun, it is a full Moon. And when the moon is perfectly dissected by the plane on that side, it is peak full moon, the moment when sun, earth, and moon are perfectly aligned on that plane. According to the astronomy department at Cornell College, at full moon, the moon rises at sunset and sets at sunrise. Of course, this is also according to any astronomy department in any university. The astronomy department's We'll also show you that the moon's orbital plane is tilted with respect to the ecliptic plane of the, of the Earth. And if you look down uh, on top of the ecliptic plane as you're doing and you're drawing, 
You can certainly get the moon and the sun and the earth to fall in line with each other horizontally, but not necessarily vertically. In fact, vertical the, the direct alignment between the moon, the sun, and the earth only, only happens uh, rarely. It can only happen really twice a year, um, and uh, it doesn't always do that. That's the reason we don't have eclipses once a month. It's also according to Stellarium, Starry Night, and every other astronomy software out there, since it's a basic tenet of the heliocentric model. Here's a real-world example of that. On uh, March 20th, 2019, uh, a little bit west of where I live in Tonopah, Arizona, we had a full moon that was going to be peak full at 642, and the moon rose at 635, and the sun set at 6:43, so we we're going to have peak full moon rising as the sun was setting. I went out to uh, photograph it. Unfortunately, uh, really bad weather and an ill-placed mountain messed up my plans. But we can still see the same thing on Stellarium. Tonopah was a little bit west of where my uh, standard location of Mesa, Arizona is. And to make everything easier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the same longitude but bring it down to the equator. So I'm going to change the this to zero and Tonopah is a little bit west. I'm going to change that to 112. Okay, so that gets us there. We're going to be UTC minus seven. Okay, and then I'll just find the date which was what, 320? Uh, about 8.42, or I'm sorry, uh, 6.42. Okay, so right here you can see the moon is getting ready to rise in the east. Sun is just setting right at the time of uh, peak full moon. Now, if I go to the antipode of this... So now he's going to change the coordinates and move around to the opposite side of the uh, planet. And when he does, what it's going to do is swap the uh, places with the sun and the moon. And then he's going to try to show us why this won't work geometrically. I can't wait. Sets. The problem with this is that in the helical model, the sun is 400 times farther away than the moon is. So if our Stellarium guy could only see the top of the sun rising because the horizon was blocking the bottom of it, how can he then turn around and also see the top of the moon when the angle to the moon is so much steeper due to it being 400 times closer to him? And yes, I realize that this diagram isn't to the scale the ball earth is made up out of thin air, but surely you must realize that if the hypotenuse of one right triangle is 400 times longer than the other, these acute angles are going to be very different. Okay, this is the only time I'm going to interrupt this program. I'm going to repeat this little teeny short segment again because this is the point you need to get. Mathematically, there's no way around this. Pay attention. You're going to see this once again, this little short segment. So if our Stellarium guy could only see the top of the sun rising because the horizon was blocking the bottom of it, how can he then turn around and also see the top of the moon when the angle to the moon is so much steeper due to it being 400 times closer to him? And yes, I realize that this diagram isn't to the scale the ball earth is made up out of thin air, but surely you must realize that if the hypotenuse of one right triangle is 400 times longer than the other, these acute angles are going to be very different. Okay, well, let's see if we can do this with a little more precision. Since the allegation is that the uh, sun and moon rise and set uh, exactly together, uh, Stellarium doesn't seem to think so. I've plugged in the same coordinates, north uh, 0 degrees at the equator, west 112 degrees. Let me move that window down out of the way. He had his terrain turned on. I'm turning it off so that we can see what we're doing here. Because we've got a handy thing, if we select the moon, we can look over here and see the altitude of the moon. 
And right now, at 1840 on that day, the moon's uh, altitude is negative 1 degree and 26 minutes. It's slightly below the horizon. If I go to the sun at that exact same time, its altitude is negative 1 degree 23 minutes. They're both below the horizon at the same time. So no, you're not going to see the sun and the moon at exactly the same time. You cannot. Let's have a look at a properly drawn two-scale uh, representation of our part of the solar system. Again, the sun way over here, and we're way over here. Okay. Now remember, this yellow line here, this one, is the line coming from the center line of the sun tangent to the earth the blue ball there the white line is the line coming from the center line of the moon if i can get this thing to cooperate i'll show it to you there you go from the center of the moon uh, to a tangent point on the earth the angle to the sun is 89.9976 degrees and the angle to the moon is 89.047 degrees less than one degree difference these guys try to tell us that it's an enormous difference and you would never be able to see the moon and the sun at the same time well, we've already shown that you won't see that anyway but I want you to notice that it's almost a straight line hundred the angle of those two lines to one another is 179.04 degrees very close to a straight line now if I look at those tangent points here and here where these where these tangent where these tangent lines to the Sun and the moon intersect the earth the surface of the earth that is less than one degree apart so that's less than 69 miles. It's actually about 66 miles. If everything were perfectly aligned, you'd have a couple of minute period in there when you couldn't see both the moon and the sun at the same time. Uh, but that would only be true when the line of nodes for the moon, uh, for the moon's orbit, is perfectly lined up with the sun. So, and that doesn't happen to be the case right now for the uh, date that he picked. There's a lesson in this, fellas. If you want to do this kind of thing, you can't do little cartoons using uh, Microsoft Paint or whatever software you were messing around with. Get on AutoCAD or a, a, a regular CAD-type accurate program. Draw the thing to scale, and then it will make sense to you. But next, I want you to take a look at what Rich's idea of a scale model is. This is priceless. So let me uh, show you one of the few things we did. All of this will come out in a separate video that will show all the different experiments, all the different scales we used. This one right here is an actual two-scale experiment, observation, whatever you want to call it. What we did was we had a curb that went a thousand feet long and beyond only we, we needed a thousand feet as you'll see uh, you can barely see it but Mike is holding a um, black rope here black string and uh, we used that at first we used black string we, we used fishing line we used twine uh, and we used eventually a laser and um, let me show you this graphically what we did because it's much easier than showing it here because the scale was so large here we go we had uh, the earth represented, let me get that off of there, uh, by a one inch diameter ball, which we drew on the concrete, one inch. The moon, one quarter inch, and we put the moon 30 inches away because the moon is 30 diameters of the earth away from us. So this is totally to scale. We centered the earth, we centered the moon, and I'm showing the sun on here, but guys, at 30 inches apart, the sun is 1,000 feet down the road, and we marked it. So everything is exactly to scale as the fraudsters at NASA give us. So then what we did was, the idea was to take thread, 
uh, a laser, whatever. Oh dear. Thread, a laser, whatever. Somehow I don't think this is going to end well. left to say after that one hey thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, we'll catch you on the next one hey gladys uh -huh. we're out of here